Hey guys, it's been a little while since my last video, um, but I'd like to get back to uploading more consistently again, so I've come up with a new series I'm going to try out, which is basically a series about explaining how the damage formula works to players like me who don't really, aren't as mathematically inclined necessarily, uh, but still kind of want to understand how it works. Uh, I went to... Jane's website where there's a whole bunch of information compiled by Sharp Edge, Jane, Lightbringer, people like that who do have the technical knowledge. Um, and to be honest, it's a little overwhelming when you go there and you see all those numbers and formulas compressed into one page. It looks a little crazy and it's definitely my brain just kind of started to shut off and I was like, how can I break this down into a way that's easy to digest for uh, your average person so yeah that's what this series is going to be about right, I guess I'll start going into the script now um, there are many different factors that go into the damage formula but today I just want to cover some of the more simple ones and go over common misunderstandings I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to math but I've done my best to get a better understanding of Neverwinter's math based on what I've learned from material written by Sharp Edge, Jane, Lightbringer, and as well as conversation that I've had with Viral and Trem. Now, I'm not a very smart guy, but I did force myself to sit down and ask enough questions to the right people until I became less of a dummy. But the two things I want to talk about today are buffs and defenses ignored. I'll start with buffs. The common misconception about buffs is that they're added together. This is not true. They multiply. For example, if a soul sight crystal gives 50% buff and into the phrase 30% buff, you might think, oh, 30 plus 50, 80% buff. But that's wrong. We're looking at more than that, actually. So in this formula, the 50% now becomes 1.5 and it's multiplied to 1.3 for ITF. So 1.5 times 1.3 is actually 1.95. So we're not looking at 80% buff, we're looking at 95% buff. And that's the thing about buffs working this way, is it just keeps going on and on the more buffs that you add, each buff getting multiplied into already existing buffs and becoming stronger and stronger and stronger until something like this happens. Please give me lashing, please. Please no. kill me. Hey, hey, nice. Good job. Two lashing, dude. Uh, this is usually about the time when people start screaming for classes to get nerfed because they don't really understand the full extent of what's going on. Sometimes class ad adjustments are actually necessary, but just keep in mind that not every player is going to have access to the same level of buffs. Uh, so when a class is singled out to be nerfed, what's really happening is that class is now having its skill ceiling raised, meaning it will be more difficult for new players to get their foot in the door. Rest in peace, TRs. Because yeah, normal players don't necessarily have access to that level of buffers. Uh, but I digress. What I'm trying to get here, uh, trying to get out here, is that buffs multiply. So the more ways that you can find to buff yourself via percentages, the better. Because with each number you multiply into the formula, the result just gets more and more impressive. Okay. That pretty much covers how buffs work. Uh, next up, I wanted to talk about armor pen. Armor pen uh, results in a stat called defense is ignored. Uh, it's not exactly... It's not an exact ratio. Like, there's no way to say exact... Well, there is a way to say exactly how much armor pen you need to get the proper defenses ignored. Uh, but the formula is pretty complex, and... So instead, I'm not going to talk about the formula. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is just the defenses ignored number, which will show up on your stats sheet as a percentage. Uh, for example, in CR, 
you need 100% defense is ignored. Um, but for any content, uh, it's basically it's your defense is ignored versus the enemy's defense. Uh, and in Castle Ravenloft, the defense of the enemy may be as high as 100%, meaning you'll need to match that 100% with your defense is ignored. And this is important because this is one of the main places that you can lose damage. If your defenses ignored are 100 and their defenses are 100, uh, then when we get to this step in the damage formula, uh, in, the, in the whole equation, then your damage is now multiplied by just one. So that means nothing happens to it. It stays the same, and that's a good thing. However, if your defenses ignored are 90 and their defenses are 100, then all of a sudden your damage isn't getting multiplied by 1 anymore. It's getting multiplied by 0.9 instead. So that means you're losing damage. And this is a bad thing. And the main misconception here is that people think, well, well, I have this skill and it mitigates damage. Or I have a weapon enchantment that debuffs, so I'm okay with less. Now nah, that's not true. Um, mitigation and debuffs are lumped into a completely different category of the damage formula and for this reason as long as your defenses is ignored don't match the defenses of the enemy you'll always miss out on damage there's no exception to this uh, oh also one more thing to mention is that because of how the formula works having more than the required amount does nothing uh, because if your 110% beats their 100%, then the difference would be negative 0.1. And in this situation, the formula is still going to just register it as a zero. So that means that uh, that means that it becomes yeah, the multiplier is still one, essentially, and damage stays the same. Uh, so that's kind of a lot to take in But basically this step the defense is ignored phase of the equation is just determining how much damage is being Reduced so it's one of the only steps where in the formula where if you don't meet the requirements You will lose damage All right, okay, so that's pretty much all the time I have for this, but please let me know in the comments which aspect of the damage formula you'd like me to talk about next. It could be how power plays into the formula. Uh, I could explain in detail how crit severity and combat advantage works. I could talk about debuffs or weapon damage, whatever you want me to talk about. Um, or else I'll just keep going piece by piece until it's all covered. But, you know, if there's anything you want me to elaborate on, let me know in the comments. Just, I, I try to always reply. I don't have a lot of subscribers, so it's not like it's super overwhelming. I, could, I just, like, check in once a day and see who said anything, and I do my best to get back to them. Uh, and, again, links are down in the description if you want to check this out in your own time. The formulas are pretty complex, and at first it can be overwhelming, so I hope this series that I'm working on will help people who want to learn. Uh, to understand the mechanics of the damage formula a little bit better in a way that's a bit easier to understand for, you know, people like you and me. Alright, see you next time.